wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. Amen, family. God bless you guys. Uh, I apologize for not being in the studio this morning, but we're we're uh, finishing up a conference today, and we're believing God's doing great things. Want to take a moment and sneak away and and come and minister this morning as we uh, as we continue to to encourage. Are you encouraged? Are you finding that place uh, in yourself that 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 you knowing you that God is moving, um, not away from you, but moving towards you. See, a lot of times you have to have acknowledgement that the relationship is growing in God and that as little children, remember we're mind, reminding each other as little children that, that we should be humble, as little children that we should be willing to, to be able to, to get along together. Is it, how, can I, how can I confess to you as my brother, as my sister, and I don't even trust you? How can I believe that you have my best, my, my best interest at heart as well as me having your best interest at heart. That's what true fellowship should be about, is that we really look out for each other. Um, that, that my desire is to see the better you. No, not the one that people talk about, not the one that, 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 that seems to, to always have somebody on you. No, that person that God has developed as a true believer in him, that no weapon formed. You see, as you start to, to live the scripture, as you get to embrace the scripture as truth, you now go to the next level. So we're here. This is October. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we're going to call it that to, uh, uh, tomorrow. I think tomorrow is the first and uh, beginning tomorrow. So Wednesday will be our launching for, uh, for the 90 day challenge that we're going to go all the way in in preparation. Now, remember um, at the network here, we really, we really thrive to not look at years or 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 months or some of us have grown to a point where we can go to another level of having quarters but for me I don't look at it as years anymore I look at it as seasons and and uh and, and seasons were meant just for that to change uh, seasons were meant just for that that you had a plan in your season and that you went so hard in your season that you will not fail that you make it sure that you finish strong in your season. So we're the 90 day challenge going all the way until uh, December 31st to finish strong. Cause when we cross over, remember we're going to cross over together this season that when we cross over, we cross over and, and, and we're not going to, we're not looking back anymore. We're not, we're not wonder, wondering about uh, resolutions and things like that. We're going to have a plan because as we're finishing strong, we're setting a plan on what we're going, what we're prepared for on the other side. Now, remember, in the new season of 2020, you have to look for something that's never, ever been done before. But how many things are you maybe going to leave behind? How many things are you not going to handle? Not in this, not in this fellowship. We are going to close out strong. We are going to start it going hard. We are going to say, you know what, first of all, what I'm asking everybody to do in this prep now, today is our prep time for this 90 day challenge is that I need you to make a list of all the stuff that you said in January that you were going to accomplish by December. I know we got a lot of new people that didn't cross over with us. And I know my covenant partners, we know that we're seasonal. So some of us have weekday seasons. I got, I can only deal with today. <laughs> Some of us have week seasons where you can deal with seven days in a row. Some of us have month seasons where you can go 30 days, 31 days. Some of us have grown to having quarters that you can go four months at a time, three months at a time. Some of us have have uh, longer quarters than others. But 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 in, in, in retrospect, you got 12 months. How do you break it down? Do you break it down into three, four quarter months or do you break it down into four, three month quarters. I, I like the three month situation for me because I can really hone in on me. I can work with that. But some of us out there are still on month and day and week seasons. Do not disrespect small seasons. You have to know that your season was made so you can grow to the next season. So as we get ready to go over, you got to make that list. I'm looking for you to make a list of all the stuff that you promised your, your people around you, all the resolutions you made on New Year's Eve, that you were going to do this and do that, and I won't do this anymore. And I don't, You need to make the list, not, 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 not if you finished them or not. 
If you still have the list, you need to bring that list out. It's checklist time. <laughs> you need to check your list. So as you're checking your list, you say, well, I said, these are the things I said I was going to do. And you draw a line. And then you be honest with yourself and say, I, no, <laughs> uh, halfway up. Uh, and then you look at it and you say, where do I need to go before the Lord and repent? Because I know we talk a lot before we actually put in the work. We, 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 we commit a lot without actually looking at the cost. Uh, we, 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 we run off so fast without looking at what it's going to really uh, 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 entail of you to, to complete the assignment in excellence. Now, remember I've said before, and I'll say it again, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, but you have to be the one that's conscious enough to say, I won't do it that way anymore. I'm going to the other side. I'm going over to the new, the new season of my life where I'm not looking at the mistakes I'm making. I'm looking at the right choices I'm making. I'm not looking at the wrong people around me. I'm looking at the right people around me. I'm not looking at me anymore. I'm looking at, I'm look, look, I'm not looking at others look at me. I'm looking at myself. And I'm holding myself accountable that now I know I can do this thing because it's my job. It's my responsibility to get me in order. It's, it's my responsibility to look at this word and say, okay, God, continue to teach me how to become a servant and a believer that I'm following you. Remember, Friday, we talked about it. It says, beloved, uh, beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Are you called? That's the first checklist you should ask. Am, am I called a children of God? If you're called a children of God, then you'll start acting like a child of God. Yes, you will. You, what is a child of God? A child of God is converted. A child of God humbles himself. A child of God is willing to, 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 to love one another as you love yourself. So if I like to play with this toy, then you'll like to play with this toy. <laughs> if you'll enjoy this, then you'll enjoy that because we are true believers and you are a child. You're called to be a child of God. Mm, are you called to be a child of God? If you are, now you know that it's up to you to stay a child of God. That's the biggest uh, challenge. It's not not becoming one because we're called to be children of God. It's staying a child of God. Then you have to humble yourself. Now you have to be submitted, submissive. And then you have to now understand is what you commit is what you'll pay for. Watch. This is where we stopped. Verse three is where we stopped. It says everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. But watch this. We're, we're getting ready. We cannot go no farther into our 90-day challenge starting on Wednesday if we're not ready here. Now watch this. Chap verse 4 of chapter 3 of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawless and sin is lawless. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And him there is no sin. Watch this. He came that we didn't have to, you don't, you cannot, people say, well, I sin just because that's just what I do. No, no, you sin because that's what you wanted to do. He was here, he was, he came to separate us from the law of sin. And we don't have to be subject to sin no more. But are you, are you operating in sin? Are you dealing with sin? Are you committing sin? Well, no, I don't go out like that. No, no, no. What are your thoughts? What, what is your true humility in your mind? I mean, what do you, what is the first thing over here? Let me test somebody this morning. When something bad happens, what is the first thought that comes to your mind? No, 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 no. Not what you ended up doing. Not how you reacted to it. I'm talking about the first thought. Like if I kicked you right now and I got the biggest love look on my face, but I kicked you. What's the first thing you want to do? Your flesh. What is your flesh telling you to do? To kick me back automatically. And that's how we have to be so consistent in what we commit in our mind that our bodies do not show it on the outside. Oh my God. A lot of us think you just do because you do. No, it's what's in you. Uh, what's a, one of our base scriptures here? Here, I'll even go. I'm gonna go there today. 
We usually just, just say it. Proverbs, verse 23. I mean, chapter 23, excuse me. Oh, my God. Verse 7. Chapter 33. Watch this, watch this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Don't you understand that what your mind is about? Oh, no, somebody needed to go up a little bit farther. Watch this, watch this. When you sit down to eat with the ruler, consider, verse 1 of 23, consider you carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle towards heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his de delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart... So is he. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Don't you know it's your appetite that's in you? Don't you know it's the stuff that you have consumed up in your mind that you normally follow and normally want to go after because you have let the things of lust and flesh overwhelm who you are or you've listened to something for so long. There's two, there's two ways of taking in information. You can be taking in the information on your own or you can be listening and receiving information from somebody else. Well, what you put in is who you really are and what you will really become. But if you put enough in your mind, your thinking will become just what you let in. Don't tell me you're holy when you let unholy in. Don't tell me you're righteous when you let unrighteousness in. Don't tell me that you're good when you all you think about is bad. Your mind is the, 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 the control panel. Your mind is the, is the, is the computer. It's the, it's the mainframe. It is the, the thing that runs everything. If your mind says yes, your body will too. Thank you, Minister Charlene, for letting the lights pop off. Because a lot of us think that we are just acting this way because we are that way. No, it's what information has been put in you, who you are now. If you commit sin, it's because you put sin in. If you think crazy, it's because you let crazy in. My God. But if you let him in, this is the good part then you'll have nothing, no other result other than having the favor of God in your life. And if you realize today, as well as I've realized, that it's not my life on the outside, it's my life on the inside. Oh my God. Ooh, I'm diving into this last little message I'm about to be preaching to some brothers here in a few minutes. But let me tell you, if you get it together on the inside, you won't have to worry about the outside because it will all fall into place. There's a man thinking in his heart, so is he. You sinning, that's because you got, oh, I'm sorry. Did I throw a rock and it hit somebody upside the head? I'm sorry. I apologize. But no, if it you are in the way of the boulder, all you got to do is get your life in order and get out the way. Who's ready to get out the way today? Who's really ready to get out the way? I am. I'll be the first one to say, Lord, take me out the way. Remove me out the way. Remove me out the way. Remove me out the way. Take me out the way. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. You don't have to remind me I'm nothing. I tell myself all day I'm nothing. I remind myself all day I'm nothing. I tell you that I'm nothing because I'm nothing but a believer and a child of God. Watch this. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. You can ask yourself on your checklist today. Are you abiding in him? Oh, no, 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 no. See, if you're abiding in him, that means everything you do is according to him. You don't make decisions on your own no more. You make decisions with him. You don't you don't make you don't make situations without go, you don't go through situations without going through him. 
Because abiding in him means that you give him first of everything. First fruit. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. I know I got bills, but I'm not paying a bill till I pay him. I know I got responsibilities, but I'm not taking care of responsibility and take until I take care of him. I know, I know, I know, but no, I will not put him second in anything. They can cut it off. I didn't need it. They could take it away. It wasn't for me, but I am going to honor him with my first fruit. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Every first fruit. When favor comes in my life, I give him the first fruit because I thank him. Because <laughs> I know it was not me. It's because I abide in him. Oh, oh, you want to talk about abiding? All right, well, let me show you abiding. Go to John. This is another one. of, And this was not set up. This was, this is a, a anointed and from the Holy Spirit. But in John 15, another one of our base scriptures here on wake up, get up and move in your mind is that to, to abide in him, you have to wake up in your mind. You have to wake up in him. Must be your first reaction you're going to do. It's good. You're going to do it because that's what you do. You give him the first fruit. Watch this. Watch this. He says, I am the true vine. Verse one of chapter 15. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Who You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit from it, of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you're wondering why you're not producing much fruit, it's on you. Yes, it is. It's on you. It's on you. Uh-uh. You are not... <laughs> You're not productive. <laughs> and I pray, I, I pray that I'm not talking to nobody. I just pray that I'm saying it for the one that needed to hear it. But if you needed to hear it, you can fix it right now. Station break, station break. See, this word is, is, is real raw and uncut. And it's going to come that way and stay that way. But let me tell you, the great thing about that is that you could change your situation right now where you're not subject to the things that you may hear or be condemned of. I'm not condemning you. You're condemning yourself. If you are a child of God and you hear the truth, the truth will hurt, but the truth will set you free. So it's not me telling about you, it's you telling yourself about you because the word will confirm itself by truth. Are you abiding in him? Because if you are, you don't have to say you, you, you're sinning no more. Uh-uh, no, no. I, 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 all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But because of his sacrifice, I am not subject to sin no more. Are you? Write that question down in your list. Because you're not. Go back to uh, 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 1 John. It says, it says uh, 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 it's, again, verse 5, And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sin has never seen him nor know him. I'm sorry. This was meant to get us ready for this 90-day challenge. If you are in sin, stop lying. Uh-uh, no, you may know of him, but you don't really know him. Uh-uh. Oh, my God. No, it says you, you haven't heard him, nor have you known him. It's time for us as believers. If you were a Christian before, come on over into the believer side. If you were a Muslim, if you were whatever title that you said you were, come over to the believer. Because in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that whosoever believe. I'm calling believers to come over that we as little children can be converted and we can learn to really work with each other and not let you jump off the bridge, not let you wreck the car, not let you overdose and not let you kill yourself because of your lack of knowledge and someone being able to stand here before you and say, Stop doing what you are doing. You can have everything God has ever said you would have. You got to abide in him. But it goes very, very important to know that where is your sin relationship at? You can't take, yo, you can't take all in the new. You cannot enter into his presence with the, with the sin. 
No, you got to be sinless. You got to be faultless and you got to be forgiven of all and forgiven all to be even in his presence. Don't you know that it is, it is your requirement to come before him holy and acceptable? Not in man's sight, because man will see a new suit and a hundred dollar bill that you put in the offering and say, oh, he knew now. <laughs> and yeah, you did some new things, but doing new is something that's never, ever been done before. All you did was change a five into a hundred. All you change is some jeans into a suit. Uh-uh. When you change some things spiritually, it's on God's terms. And God is seeing and receiving everything that you're doing. And are you abiding in him? See, you want to know why things are so messed up? It's because of sin. Well, I don't do that no more. No, sin is sin. My God, there's no different intro between sin. That little red lie is just as big as the big conspiracy. That little behind the scenes situation is as big as the is the is the people on CNN right now. With their seen, so yeah, they're wrong. But what about the stuff that's unseen? I'm gonna let that one settle down for a minute. Yeah, what about the unseen stuff? What, what about that? That's the stuff we gotta deal with. That's the stuff we gotta hold ourselves accountable to and say, I want the best God has for me. Lift your hands and get it right now. Lord, forgive me. I'm getting this thing. I'm going to fix this thing and I'm going to become sinless because you are manifest that I could, because you're no sin, I can be no sin. I know people out there giving you that message, oh baby, once saved, always saved. That's a lie from the pits of hell and don't get caught up in that lie because you'll be on this line with me, but you'll be getting held accountable to why did you believe that lie? Uh-uh, no, no, come on, preach, Minister Terry, sins of the mind are much worse than sins of the flesh. Uh-huh, some of you just stopped doing it on the outside, but you still sit up late at night having the same sinful desires and the same sinful thoughts. Hmm, let that one drop. Well, we lost some, we lost some listeners on that one, y'all. Oh, my God. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning, for he is purpose the son of god was manifest that he might destroy the works of the of the devil whoever has been born of god does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of god we're gonna let that settle down right there see this is the, one of them words that we got to really look at as we're writing that list as you're holding yourself accountable, no, don't post your list on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anywhere. No, this list is between you and God. I don't want your list. I got my own list. Don't even give it to your husband or your wife. Don't even give it to your judge. Please keep this list confidential between you and God. So you can really work on this thing because soon as you let somebody in, they're going to tell you how hard it is. Soon as you tell somebody what you committed, they're going to say, baby, you ain't going to never make that. As soon as you tell somebody that your commitment for God has went up, sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut and just do the work. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. Sometimes you just got to, I'm learning that bigger than anybody. Just keep your mouth shut. Learn to let God get the glory. Let him be the one to tell all about the glory, all about the story, all about the situation. He'll reveal it to people. People will see the work, not of you, but of God. People will see that you are now finally realizing that it's not your will, but it is the will of God because you're becoming sinless. And let me tell you today, and I'm only here to tell you this, that yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. 
Uh uh, yes, you can do it. That's thank you, Minister CC. Mr. You own it, Mr. Charlene. You know when we started. Get in the light. The light will change things. Get out the darkness and you won't do dark things. It's that simple. Some of us need to, you know, ooh, Holy Spirit. Some of, he, he says some of us need to go buy a flashlight. A big old bright flashlight, big illuminated flashlight. And you just walk around with it just so you can get used to being in the light. Even in the daytime, you need to shine that light. Even in, in, in the nighttime, when you come in the house, you need to shine that light so you can get used to walking in the light. Open them drapes. Let the light in. Take two tones of that tin off. Let the light in. Change some shades and let the light in and watch your life change and understand that you can do it. Watch this, watch this. Boop. That's that Holy Ghost. I'm throwing that at you right there. Boop. You can do it. And I'm so proud that you're doing it. I know some of y'all listen to me all the time and I'm all up in y'all grill, all up in your Kool-Aid. You know why? I'm Because I know you're doing it. And that's why you're here every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday. And I'm so proud that I know who's going to show up because you're trying to go higher. You want better. You're not just, you're not content with just the contentable. I made up another word. Somebody got on me yesterday while I was preaching. Oh, like, boy, you'll make up a word. Yes, yes, yes. You cannot be contentable with anything. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. Continue to grow and, and encourage one another that we cannot be contentable with anything. And we're going to serve you, Lord, and we're going to live according to your promises and your word and your direction and your commandments. So we glorify you today, Lord, that it's not our will, but it's your will. Lord, we, we celebrate you today, Lord, that we decrease, that you increase. Lord, we, we, we praise you today because you get the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name, the name that's above every name, the name that every knee will bow, Jesus, the name that's first, the name that's last, the name that's forever and forevermore. Jesus Christ is Lord, and I am a living witness, and I'm living proof that he lives today in me that he can live through somebody else and that they can make it they can figure it out and they can get their own together because he's gonna come and when he come they're gonna be ready and it was not me it was me directing them because i lift you up as you said you be lifted up you'll draw all men unto you so let them come to you circumvent me right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Send them on to you that you give all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah to your name, which is the highest praise. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want to open up the portion room and ask my covenant partners to continue to give. I mean, this is not the financial uh, portion of this broadcast. This is where we give spiritually. Anything you have for me right now, Lord, I give it away free. Any labor I put in that you were going to reward me for, give it away. I donate, I give freely without no return right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you. I praise you. I glorify you that you're already delivering, that you're already setting the captive free, that you're already healing the sick, that you've already, to, by our offering right now, you are moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, I'm working on my region still. I'm working on pulling their minds back. No more Alzheimer's. No more lost memory. No more mind disease. No more insanity. No more psychiatric uh, uh, emotional uh, encounters again. In the name of Jesus, I pray healing. I pray deliverance without anything coming back to me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wake up in your mind. Get, get up in your thinking and move in your purpose. Now, if you want to sow into this ministry, this ministry of good ground, the Now Network, P2P Ministries, you can do that right now at provoked2000now.com. Provoked 
2000now.com or at my cash app, dollar sign, PSTR2K1, dollar sign, PSTR2K1. All your financial blessings go to, to ensure our radio network growing and expanding as we're doing some great things coming up in this week. You'll see a lot of changes and uh, in our incorporating with other ministries and other broadcasts, trying to really get on a, a unity to share the gospel every day, all day, consistently. We thank you for all your gifts and all of your all of your, your offerings that, that you have sown. We know you've returned. We know you've gotten your harvest back, but we know God is about to do greater things because you're going to do greater things. Remember, October 26th, the Harvest Festival is going down. We need your, we need your help for that. We want to make a big impression for the kids. We have, we're have we going to have a, 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 a hallelujah costume um, 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 contest out there. The kids can dress up, have fun. We're going to have music, games, toys, you name it. We're going to do a great thing on October 26th. We need your help on that event. Come on and get involved. Get involved. Amen. You can so also at Provoked or at my Cash App for either one of those events also uh, or just become a covenant partner. Now, if you go on the website, Provoke2000now.com, you'll see on the website that there's a covenant uh, link. Click that. It'll explain in, 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 in depth about the covenant relationship with our ministry and how it's a give-give relationship that we give, we receive, it's just, we do whatever. And anything we have here in our ministry that can help you, we want to help you and launch you and get you, uh, get you back, uh, get you where God wants you to be. When? Now. <laughs> Amen. We're still calling out our writers. We're, we're, we, we, look, we got to put this, these memoirs out before December, uh, 2019. So we can be ready to go into 2019. How God loved you. I got some of your stuff. I need you to send it. If you did, if it's resend it. Let's send it again. Rewrite it. Do whatever. But how did you, what was the time that you really knew God loved you? Not because he loved the world. Not because he sent his only begotten son. When did you personally know that God loved you? One chapter, one paragraph, three sentences, something that you can insert in here. You can be anonymous on this also if you like, or if you want your name as an author, you will definitely add that in there. But we're putting it out. December, we're already putting it together now. We got some people over, uh, editing and looking over the, the, the information that we do have, but we need more. And we'd love to have it, and we're going to go for it. Well, what we have, November as the cutoff date, but we're, we're, yeah, we're going to go with that and move forward at that point. Come on, get involved uh, with that project. Amen? Well, family, I love you guys. I appreciate you. Remember, uh, Wednesday is going to start our 90-day challenge of finishing strong. Yes, it's prep time. We're getting ready to go over to the other side, and we got 90 days to do it, and we're going to do it together. Make that list. Make that list of all the stuff you said you were going to accomplish, how much weight you said you was going to lose, what food you was going to stop eating, what man you was going to stop talking to, what woman you was going to let go, what money you was going to save, all that stuff. Put it down on the list. Don't get mad at yourself. Just look at it then and say, man, I didn't do well. <laughs> Oh man, about five years ago, that's how I was. I'm like, oh man, why did I, what, Lord, you, because that's who he gave it to me. And I'm not perfect, believe me, I got a list. Uh -huh, I have a list. I have a list because I, I took a sidetrack on some stuff and let some other stuff kind of, but I'm going to finish strong. I guarantee you that this is already, I'm working right now to get things in order. I'm working right now to catch up and, and say, Lord, forgive me. And he's forgiven me. But now he's given me the strength not to move the mountain, but to climb it in excellence. Some of us just want to ask God, oh, remove it, Lord, take it away. No, it's going to, you got some work to get rid of it. I'm going to let that one settle down. It's going to cost you something. Nothing's for free. You got to work for this thing and work hard. The harder you work, the better you get. And I'm working hard. <laughs> Amen. So get that list together. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday and we're going to get this thing in order. I pray today was a blessing to you. It was a blessing to me. The Lord, as always, uses me as a vessel that I can hear the word. I can't wait to re-listen as I'm uh, posting on other po on other uh, arenas and things like that. I can't wait to listen and, and, and just see what God did. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. But the most important thing that you must know 
is that you are God's greatest miracle. Don't let nobody tell you different. And if they are around you, not telling you that how great you are in God, how great you can be, and how greater he wants you to be, cut them out right now and stop listening. You need some positive stuff in your life so you can become positive. Remember what I said, what you put in is what comes out. Wake up, get up, and move in your purpose in Jesus' name. Talk to you Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon on the East Coast. Four, wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. Love you guys. Facebook, y'all already know I ain't going nowhere till I say hello personally to you because this is our main, this is our main stream. Uh, Facebook is where God has instructed us from day one. To minister, and we've been pretty consistent over five years. Man, five years of doing wake up. It used to be just Wednesday and Friday, and then God launched about a year ago to go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Some people have already been requesting, "Won't you go do it every day?" And I'm like, oh, "When the Lord says it, I will. I will. I will every day." And I believe I have a word every day to continue to grow and to, to continue to sow and to continue to let God move in my life. Amen. Family, I love you guys. Good morning, Minister Charlene. God bless you. Mr. Terry, good morning. Uh, Miss Minister Toshi loves life. Oh, that's what that, okay. Amen. Good morning to you. Good morning, uh, Minister Farrellyn Dorsey. Good morning. Good morning, Minister Shannon Jones. How are you? Minister Paulette McCoy, good morning. Deacon Royal Val, what's up, man of God? How are you? Amen. Mr. Cecilia Nunez, good morning. Minister Michelle Cortez, good morning, woman of God. How are you? Minister Danny Wooten, good morning. How are you? What's up, my brother, homie? Minister Bettina Bland, good morning. Minister Stacy Bryan, good morning. Minister James Hudson, good morning. What's up, my brother? I know you at the gym getting it on. Minister Tavegas Dawson, good morning. Minister Dawson, I, I, I don't hate to get names. Mr. Carolyn Hamilton, good morning. How are you, woman of God? Minister Spencer Butler, good morning. Minister Natasha Trahan, good morning. You and Shannon, good morning to both of you. Minister Rosalind Douglas, good morning. Elder Carlos Epiger, what's up, homeboy? <laughs> That's my friend there. Minister Terrell Simmons, good morning. Minister Curtis Odom, good morning. How are you, man of God? Amen. Minister Curtis and Minister Paulette was on from the beginning this morning. What's up, Paulette? You went the whole way. The day. Didn't even have to listen to the archives. <laughs> Man, I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Well, we'll be back on Wednesday. Go to the next level. Go to the next level and, uh, and, and thus saith the Lord. Amen. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. We'll talk to you uh, on Wednesday. Wake up, get up, and move in your purpose. Love you.